It's up, YouTube, man. Nigga, little niggas got all scores and shit, bro. But look, today we got the creep. Man, we got Diddy 2.0, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe, the notification bell down below. I don't know, Michael. But a lot of times, the nerdy whites, Mike, they want to partner up with the kids at the cool table. Snoop told a story one time where he said the dudes from um, Uber was with Suge. And they begged Suge to come introduce them to Snoop. These dudes be going to see Capital. I just want to be around Kevin Durant. I want to be around Nas. I want to be around all of these cool people that I grew up on. I was the nerdy dude. Now I got enough money to, to mesh with them. Everyone knows that money rules the world and the rap game is no exception to that rule. But the puppet master behind many iconic artists is a truly sinister and creepy man. Michael Rubin is an industry tycoon and his name really started circulating along with this embarrassing clip of gangster rapper Meek Mill, as some of you may recall, where bro was literally bunny hopping like an absolute psychopath on camera. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. And it's slowly coming to light that he is your favorite rapper's favorite billionaire, orchestrating a large network of young black talents across hip hop and even sports. Even the likes of 50 Cent have been seen clowning rappers close to Michael Rubin. From the outside looking in, it seems like a pretty good idea to associate yourself with a billionaire, as there are countless benefits being tied to such wealth. But the quote unquote benefits that Michael Rubin comes with tend to be questionable at best. Don't be making fun of me when I'm drunk, you're gonna get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says, you're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're gonna unpack the unsettling hold that Michael Rubin has on hip hop culture. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we gotta understand his origins in the world of hip hop and the power that he holds outside of the game that you'll see extends farther than anyone really knows. With 11 big B's to his name, it's hard to imagine Michael Rubin ever starting off with humble beginnings, but that's exactly how the story goes. Like many kids, he started shoveling snow when he was only 8 years old, and by the time he was 12, he had a ski repair shop that eventually raked in 125k a year. His key an eye for business carried into adulthood, and perhaps his most important money move came in an early investment with Fanatics, the top sports merchandise company in the entire world. This wasn't a one-off expense though. Ruben loved sports, and he eventually was inspired to purchase the Philadelphia 76ers and became its most popular this owner, despite sharing the team with several others. And it was courtside at a Philly game where he met the gangster rapper Meek Mill, fresh off the scene after coming up with moving and raw bars like like these. Some summer nights can even turn cold. In the streets of Philly, where niggas don't even get to turn old. My heart pumping to a turn gold. The two men were from completely different worlds, but they would end up having far more in common than one would expect. And they would begin to bond over sports, business, and more. As conversation continued, no one would expect the can of worms that was about to burst open from this single interaction. And it would change the course of modern rap entirely. So my daughter was just t talking to Nikki, and Meek's like, you know, in his way, he's like, who are you? I'm like, you know, the Sixers guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then within a second, the, what I loved about Meek from the, from the moment I met him, he just started peppering me with business questions. Like, mm -hmm. hey, if I want to do this, how would you do, do that? And if I want to just do this in sports, and if I want to put this deal together. And in a lot of ways, he was a similar version of me from a completely different environment. They continued to meet a few times as a friendship was truly beginning to form and in their talks, Ruben would eventually learn about Meek Mill's ongoing legal struggle. One night, maybe we'd hung out at the games maybe 10 times and we were at halftime. And I remember this for the rest of my life. I said, um, hey, you, you, I'm going with some friends to the Brigada afterwards. You want to come? He said, I'm not allowed. I'm like, do you need permission from your mom? It's literally what I said to him. I said, do you need permission from your mom? I was joking. I was being a wise ass. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, I'm on probation. I'm like, how's this probation thing work? He's like, I'm not allowed to leave. You can't go across the bridge 10 minutes. He's like, I'm not allowed, I'll get arrested. I'm like, I'm a, what'd you do again? You see, Meek Mill was under serious pressure from a 2007 incident involving a case where he was locked up for illegal fire and possession. He got two years behind bars plus five years probation. And when his probation period was supposed to expire, a hard ass judge continued to hold him on a legal leash. And things would not change for him as he grew older, even though his rap career was flourishing. In 2017, Meek picked up more probation charges for popping Willie 
and getting mixed up in an airport brawl, violating his current restrictions. And when Michael heard about his new friend's struggle and realized it was a problem on the judge's end, he decided to step in. I'm not gonna say who I called. I started calling people of importance to find out is everything he's telling me true? Like, I was hearing like, all I was hearing was everyone loves him, but he's got this crazy judge. But you know what? I want to make sure I, I'm just, I'm always on guard. If you're, if you're in my situation, you're always. And so I kept getting back. He's done everything he's been asked from a probation perspective. You know, he's well liked. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a little bit on rap time sometimes, but this is a good guy. You know, he's doing lots of charitable things. I wrote this letter, which it became, I never thought it would become public. It became very public. Mm -hmm. I wrote this letter and basically talked about my relationship with him. I basically said, like, look, this has become one of my closest friends. Like, you know, he knows my daughter well, he knows my mom, you know, he knows, you know, all of my, you know, partners in the Sixers. Despite Ruben's letter and his appearance in court during the hearing, the judge still sentenced Meek to two to four years in prison. This was a shocking verdict considering everyone involved had strongly recommended against prison time, including the parole officer. It was abundantly clear that the judge had a vendetta against the young Philly native, but lucky for Meek, he had a billionaire friend in his corner of the ring. I literally, I look at Meek and he he always wants to be Mr. Tough Guy. His eyes turn pink. You know, there's tears coming out of his eyes. I like I, I can't remember the last time anything made me tear up. I have tears coming out of my eyes. And I looked at him, I'm like, I will not stop until you're out of prison and she's off the bench. And that's exactly what he sought out to do. Pouring over six million dollars alongside Jay-Z to hire the best investigators and lawyers to fight for Meek's freedom. And to Millie, it meant the world. You're now sitting in an orange jumpsuit and you're still smiling from ear to ear. I don't get it. Like he said, if it were me, I'd be so mad. How are you happy? Meek sat there, thought about it for like a minute. He said, Robert, I've been sent to prison three times for never committing a crime. This is my entire life. I've been in and out, out of this thing my entire life. This is the first time people are fighting for me. You're here to see me today. You know, Michael's been here 20 times. There's a crusade to free Meek. This is the first time that's happened. All that effort was worth it in the end, as the judge would eventually get revealed to be super corrupt, even beyond the courtroom. Aside from multiple weird cases on her end, she was also secretly spying on Meek and even demanded he drop her name in a song. Some pretty strange behavior. But the real win in all this was for Michael Rubin, who was quickly being hailed as a model billionaire and culture icon. He kept riding this wave when he established the Reform Alliance with Jay-Z to combat legal system failures. We said we're gonna get a million people that are on probation or parole that shouldn't be on, out of the system. There's, there was four and a half million people at the time. This is three and a half years ago. We've already cleared a pathway for 650,000 people that are of the richest man in rap to emerge from the most unseeming shadows. And it was too late for those that flocked to him. The friendship with Lil Baby, what was it about him and your guys' uh, rapport that sort way, of he's connected to him? He's a great guy. Baby is great absolutely guy. one of the best human beings in the planet. There's never been a thing I've asked him to help with, like from a charitable perspective, with the Reform Alliance. There's never been anything. He's just such a great human being. I love his work ethic. Uh, rapport that sort way, of connected to him. Guy. He's a great guy. Baby is great absolutely guy. one of the best human beings in the guy. planet. There's never been a thing I've asked him to help with, like from a charitable perspective, with the Reform Alliance. There's never been anything. He's just such a great human being. I love his work ethic. When you hear his story, and I, again, I don't know fun. anything about music. So when Sweet I met him Captain the first Bro, time, which Drake in the bro. Bahamas in 2020, Whoa. and he's telling me his story about, you know, he was in j j jail a couple years earlier, he never rapped, and now he's got this great, you know, kind of music career. You just want to root for the guy. Ruben's new influence pulled in big names. Lil Baby, Travis Scott, and Quavo, to name a few. Successful people hang out. It made sense at the time, especially given Michael's recent investment into Meek Mill. But a noticeable pattern began to emerge in these relationships that made people question his intentions. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your bunny hops. They suck. Your bunny hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Super weird dynamic, and the internet exploded when they saw what was going on. Bro, this is some house slave type sh I'm gonna hop for you, Massa. When he lost, he went straight to hopping too. Man, the rap game is nothing but a modern day plantation. 
I discussed the situation in much more detail in my video about how Meek Mill destroyed his career. But one takeaway from that video is that this was all weird behavior for a man like Meek Mill. A respected street artist who really portrays the image of a gangster, it just felt really weird for him to do something like this. And due to all the negative publicity he was receiving, Meek Mill tried to explain that this was a game played in prison. But of course, that only got him flamed even more. Someone tweeted at him, how much did they pay you to do this? This is the first time he's addressed it. Keep in mind, there's all these Diddy rumors about Meek. There's this, what I believe to be a fake audio about Meek and Diddy engaging in some wrestling for the cereal like he used to do with them. <laughs> like he said he used to. People have this assumption that Meek is doing zestivities with Diddy or potentially gay. I don't believe that. So he says, this is a game I started from prison. We used to make killers do bunny hops when they lost because it was too hostile for money. A YouTube channel, the link. This be us. I'm gonna get Ruben to bunny hop for me, okay? LOL, I'm gonna teach him D-thang hop. I don't even know what Yo, half of this what? means. The fact that he said we used to do this in prison and we used to make killers do bunny hops, this is one of those things where if Meek was right next to me and showed me the phone, anybody really, I'm looking at him like, dog, that is not what you want to send out. You used to make killers do bunny hops. What? What? What are you talking about? And then I'm going to get Ruben to bunny hop. And this is the thing. Him getting Michael Ruben to bunny hop for him has no effect on Michael Rubin. Most people don't even know Michael Rubin is the owner of the company that he owns. The clip of him doing bunny hops got so much attention that it resurfaced amid the Diddy allegations a while back as well. To make matters worse, this wasn't an isolated incident, as Lil Baby was another rapper who was a victim of one of Rubin's house bets that caught people's attention, and not for a good reason. What's the bet? Six braids coming off your head. Six braids off the back of your head if you fall asleep from 5 p.m. until 4 a.m. My entire head. Bet. Bets between friends aren't unheard of. But the eerie part of all of this is that we never even seen Ruben lose. It leads us to ask questions like, is Lil Baby really gonna get into Ruben's bed and shave his hair? And if Meek lost that bet to anyone else, is he really letting his homies post the video online? The answer is obvious, and the truth becomes crystal clear when we see Kanye, one of the most high self-esteemed humans to ever walk Earth at this point, get talked down and demeaned on a post. So this is what really happens with Peter, A.B., <laughs> Kanye. But we do. This nigga get off track. We'll interview her and who let's go ahead and do a case of